Hello, welcome to another video. You substitution is beautiful when the arguments of the trig functions, sine and cosine, are the same, okay? Or tangent and secant are the same. But when you start seeing two different arguments, this has an argument of 2x, and this has an argument of 3x, there's going to be a major problem with your U substitution. Don't use it. So when this happens, you want to find yourself applying all the trig identities that you know just to make sure this looks a little bit different. And the good news is that whenever sine and cosine are sitting next to each other with two different arguments, think of the sine of a sum of angles. Remember the angle sum? trig identity, sine A plus B equals sine A cosine B plus cosine A sine B. And that's what we're going to try to use to, today and see how quickly it could help us solve this. Now you need to remember this. When the arguments are different and your expression looks like this, please use trig identities. Let's do it. So in your trig class or in your pre-calculus, you must have come across these expressions. Now, how do we write sine A plus B when you're adding two angles together? Okay, this is going to be sine A cosine B plus cosine A sine B. Okay, now it's easy to remember because you're repeating the exact same thing for the subtraction. It's just that the middle sign is going to change just as this one has changed. So let's repeat the same thing, sine A cosine b minus cosine a sine b. So one good thing we could do is, why don't we just add, if we add both expressions, we're going to have both equations, we're going to have sine a plus b plus sine a minus b will be equal to, the sum of these two is going to be 2 sine a cosine b. Now, when I said let us add, I knew that these two were going to zero out because one is positive and the other is negative. So now we have an expression on this right hand side that looks a little like this. Okay, you can now start to assume that your a is 2x and your b is 3x. Okay, so, but just to make it look exactly like this, let's get rid of these two, this two. So this 2 is going to divide this, divide this, divide this. You'll end up with an expression that says that sine A cosine B will be equal to 1 half of sine A plus B plus 1 half of sine A minus B. So because I don't want to write too much on this side, why don't we just clean up things on this side? Let us now say, let A be equal to 2x and B be equal to 3x. If we put those numbers here, we're going to end up with sine 2x cosine 3x will be equal to 1 half of sine. Remember, this is A plus B. What will A plus B be? It will be 5x. So we're going to write 5x plus 1 half of sine. What is a minus b? That's 2x minus 3x. That's going to give us negative x. Okay. So I chose these numbers because I wanted you to recognize that it's possible for you to have a negative argument in this strict definitions. That's why your knowledge of whether a function is even or odd will come in. Sine is an odd function, which simply means that f of negative x, okay, that's, that's what it's, an odd function means. f of negative x would be negative f of x. So, that's for sine. If it was cosine, nothing changes. f of negative x would, be, would still be the f of x, okay? But because cosine is an odd function, we can move this negative out here and it will save us, okay? So, let's rewrite this. It's going to be sine 2x cosine 3x will be equal to 1 half of sine 5x minus 1 half of sine x. Okay? So that's it. 
Now we need to, instead of writing this now, we got to transfer this to the side and see what happens. This is going to be the integral of 1 half of sine 5x, okay, minus 1 half of sine x dx, okay? Now, we can split this into two different integrals, which will be 1 half the integral of sine 5x minus 1 half dx. Never forget dx, otherwise it becomes meaningless. Okay, minus 1 half the integral of sine x dx. So, let's take the integrals. The integral of this will be 1 half times, because when you integrate this, it's going to be negative cosine, okay, negative cosine, but you have to still divide by 5, so it will be, um, let's say, negative, negative 1 over 5 cosine x, okay, and then when you integrate this, it's going to be a negative cosine times a negative, it's going to be a positive, and then you're going to have 1 half of cosine x plus c, okay, never forget the c. The C shows up as soon as you get rid of the integral signs, okay? So let's finish this up. This is going to be um, negative 1 over 10. No, this is not cosine x. This is cosine 5x. Cosine 5x. So 5x, and this would be plus 1 half of cosine x plus C. Well. You might put this in front and put that behind if you like. Otherwise, this should be a good answer. So, but I'm going to just write it this way. It's going to be 1 half of cosine x minus 1 over 10 cosine 5x plus the beautiful c. And this is the integral of that. So understand that you knowing this is a secret to solving this. See, it looks a, a lot easier and faster and simpler because I had to show you this. This is all you need to know. You just need to know about the half angle, this one. If you establish this in your head, you just need to write it as a second line and you'll be fine. I hope you learned something in this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Share it. Tell your friends about it because there are more videos like it. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, don't stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.